Welcome to our opening for Willful Women, a tribute to the artist. Uh, we are excited to welcome you to our virtual gallery opening. Uh, this isn't the way we normally run things, but uh, we're just so excited to be here with you however we can. Uh, we're also excited to welcome you guys to still come see the exhibit. Uh, we're open from 10 to 5.30, uh, Monday through Saturday. We would love for you guys to come and uh, visit us and say hi, as well as see all the wonderful pieces we have. Uh, we'd like to extend a uh, warmest thank you to Lake Osceola State Bank as our sponsor for this event, and uh, we excite we're really excited for you guys to come down and see it. Welcome to the opening of the Willful Women, a tribute to the artists uh, exhibit, and we had hoped to be together with you live, but we're going to try and do our best to do this with video and help you to experience the entire show. Uh, the premise of this show is that we have many uh, women artists who, against all odds, were able to make it uh, in a pretty male-dominated arena. And we know these names. Uh, we have uh, Berta Marisot, we've got uh, Mary Cassatt, Frida Kahlo, these famous women artists uh, who we want to pay tribute to. And so we asked our artists, we put out a call, and said, please create a piece that either pays homage to the original artist in style or in subject matter. And we have a little of both here. And uh, these pieces all have um, identification on them for what was the inspiration. And so, for instance, this one of uh, Marlisa's is a George O'Keefe inspiration, and you can see that on the on the wall panel with it. And then we have Joanne Klubinski, who's actually uh, paying homage to two artists. And all kinds of different media, too. We have origami, we have um, fiber art, we have paintings, we have drawings. So it's a really nice cross-section of the various pieces um, that pay tribute to these women artists. So, I just don't think it might, it might not be up yet. Is going up, maybe? I can ask, I can ask. Do they just go up down the main street, or? Uh, no, there are, I think, I think there's a hundred and six banner And we encourage you to come in and see these works in person during the week. We're open six days a week um, from 10 until 5.30. And when you come, you can uh, easily social distance because we rarely have a crowd, but we have had a steady stream of people coming through. Each month this uh, past year, we've been paying tribute to the amazing women of Macosta County. And each time that we've honored a woman tied to one of the exhibits, it's been tied thematically. And so this time it was just fitting that we would choose an amazing artist, and that would be Rita Mae Miller. Uh, Rita Mae has been uh, creating art in the form of uh, paintings and carvings and other sculptures out of uh, metal. And she's also an accomplished writer and has a published book. She's had three published books, I believe, and also um, uh, published a play that was uh, performed in Muskegon. She has been uh, creating uh, work all over the state and has been exhibiting, and she will be turning 90 next month. And so um, I had a really nice uh, letter from one of, from her eldest child, who lives in Texas, uh, who talked about growing up in this house with all of this art going on. And it was so nice because uh, they said, uh, I'd always tell my friends that I grew up among the wood chips and uh, described the, uh, the fact that neighbors w were well aware of Rita Mae's uh, talents and would bring them trees, which would get cured in the barn. And then once the, uh, the uh, tree could be used for carving, uh, she said she would have to stare at it for a while to see what was going to emerge. And so here we have three, four carvings, um, really, 
and um, this is just a small sampling of, of her work. And uh, while we look at some of her paintings here, I want to read one of, just one of her poems. We have five of them on display here. Uh, this is called Moon Mare. My unfed chickens crowd this midnight yard. Pale ghosts roosting on rails and trees on the mower. What can I say? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry. It's been a very strange day. Down from perches, a circle they form in spangled shadows of sycamore. Two giant roosters with fierce red lobes bind my hands with chicken wire, and the chickens weave heads up, heads down, ruffle and skip faster and faster in frenzied dance. The moon is drawn down in a barnyard mesh. I'm twirled three times and struck with a willow branch. And then, in a circle of white-faced children, I move head up, head down, ruffle and skip, feathered and hungry. I move red-combed in the moon-dimmed yard. And in addition to honoring uh, Rita Mae Miller, we also uh, wanted to honor the four founding women who were the, art, the original artists at Artworks. And uh, we are happy to pay tribute to Kathleen Vandemark, to Kim Nichols, to Carrie Weiss, and to Kristen Ettinger. Uh, we pay tribute to them um, for their successes as artists, but also for their vision that has become the artworks that we know today, a place where local artists can share their work. Hi, everyone. My name is Rachel Folk. I am professor of art history at Ferris State University, and I'm also a member of the Artworks Board. And it's my honor to serve as the juror for our current exhibition, Willful Women, A Tribute to the Artists. Overall, I was really impressed by this exhibition. I, you know, when I walked in, I got a sense of the various artists that um, we were paying tribute to in the exhibition, you know, borrowing perhaps a little bit of their style or their approach or their subject matter. But what I really loved about this show is all of the works on display are unique and individual works of art. They express something new. So while they pay tribute to um, trailblazing women artists, they are also their own expressions, their own original artworks. It was difficult for me to pick my top two, but that was the task at hand. So I want to share with you um, what I ended up being most drawn to. My second choice, my number two, was by Barb Bazan, Jessica with her Pete's. Um, it is a tribute to Frida Kahlo, and in particular, Frida Kahlo's self-portrait with monkeys. And I, that was obvious right away that we've got some Kahlo inspiration here. Um, you know, so her style and her approach is captured. But I loved that this was such a personal piece. Um, the sitter's name is Jessica. And I want to get to know Jessica as I look at this work of art. She seems interesting. She's got... Um, you know, I just want to know what she's thinking. She's got an interesting expression. Uh, she has tattoos. She has a cool dress on. Uh, you know, what is she thinking? What is her story? And then she's surrounded by cats, um, these black and white cats who are also looking out at the viewer. And I kind of want to know what they're thinking. Um, there's a sense of seriousness and intensity to the work of art, but it also has a sense of whimsy. Um, these pets, these animals, uh, there's a little bird in the tree. Um, you know, I want to know who they are and, and what they mean to Jessica. Um, you know, a lot of symbols. I saw an apple. I saw a computer mouse. Um, I'm just kind of wondering, and you know, I could speculate, but kind of wondering what those mean in this particular painting. And in that way, I thought it was a, a great tribute to the approach and style of Frida Kahlo, who was an intensely personal painter. And this, this work of art itself is very personal, makes me want to learn more about our sitter, Jessica. I want to sit down with her, um, get to know her, and get to know those cats. My first choice ended up being Summertime on the River by Linda Stephen which is a tribute to Mary Cassatt's Summertime and some of her other river paintings. Uh, so Mary Cassatt was a, an American artist who worked with the Impressionists in Europe. Um, and 
this was a really interesting piece by Linda Stephen because it's not a painting. It is in fact made of folded and shaped Japanese washi papers. So we are taking, or, or Linda Stephen, our artist, was taking uh, a painting, but executing it uh, in a different medium, executing her tribute anyway, in a different medium. And I think the choice of the Japanese papers was just so interesting to me because as Linda Stephen says in her artist statement, Mary Cassatt herself was very interested in Japanese art that she got to know primarily through Japanese prints. So I loved the connection to various sources of inspiration that went into the creation of this original work by Linda Stephen. Um, it gives depth and life in another medium. I get a sense of Mary Cassatt, but it is, of course, its own work. It's small, it's one of the smaller pieces in the show, but I have to say it really immediately pulled me in um, with its color, with its texture, with its shape, with its depth. And for all of those reasons, Summertime is my top choice in a, a very interesting and exciting exhibition at Artworks. So congratulations to all of our artists. I hope everyone um, gets a chance to see the show in person. Thank you. Hello, my name is Linda Stephen, S-T-E-P-H-E-N, and I am a paper artist, and I grew up in Big Rapids, and I graduated from Big Rapids High School, and I'm so excited to be part of the Willful Women exhibit, a tribute to the artists. For my artist, I chose American Impressionist Mary Cassett. What I love about her work is she did many scenes of people having fun outside, um, which is actually a theme that is one of my favorite in my works, like this scene of a corn maze in the fall. When I looked at Mary Cassett's work, and she used for many of her works um, oil painting, and I looked at the oil and I saw the large brush strokes and I thought, I can do that with layered papers. Here's some of the papers um, that I have collected um, since I first went to Japan 30 years ago. And these are some of the papers that I used in my artwork, Summertime on the River. It took me about six weeks to make uh, my art piece. It's six inches by eight inches by two inches deep. But I finished it in Big Rapids. But first, I had to do research on the river all by myself, well, with children. And I went tubing, and I was floating in the tube past Michigan River, past Michigan Bridge, where it's a little bit quiet. I could see the far shore. I could see the sunlight on the water. So it's the same perspective as that scene. And then I went home, and I finished the water reflections for the art piece. So the goal of my art is to have viewers appreciate the beauty in the details around them and to celebrate their part in the world. My name is Barb Bazan. And I chose to do Frida Kahlo as my piece because um, I like to use my symbols and archetypes in my pieces that to represent um, my opinions and my personal voice just like she did and it's uh it's kind of a challenging thing to do <laughs> because you really are putting yourself out there for folks and um, oftentimes myself i don't even know what some of the symbols mean and i'm sure that was true for frida as well and then when you have to try to explain them folks it, it can get kind of strange <laughs> just to say the least um, some of the things that I, I'm sure most people know about Frida and the bus accident and all her health concerns and all that kind of stuff a couple of the things that I um, liked when I was reading about her and there's just tons of information online about Frida and lots of books and, um, she became popular again in the late 70s and that's when a lot of people really got to know her and her work. Um, the problem with stuff with Frida is that um, 
she was classified as a surrealist, and uh, even though she hung with surrealists and literally her stuff was hung with surrealists in galleries, she really didn't like that term used for her stuff. One of the quotes that I found, um, she stated that she detested surrealism, which to her was bourgeois art and not true art that people hope from the artists. And another quote was, really, I do not know whether my paintings are surrealist or not, but I do know that they are the frankest expression of myself. And so um, one of the problems that's occurred uh, with her work is um, she's become such an icon for minority groups and feminists, and, and her image is everywhere, and people never have really studied her life or studied her work and they just use her image to symbolize a, something <laughs> and they really don't even understand what it is she stood for and um, so they like compare her to Van Gogh but Van Gogh it's it's just you know when you think of Van Gogh okay you might think of his self-portraits and you might think of the self-portrait he did with his ear thing you know when he cut his ear off but you don't, you think of his paintings, you think of Starry Night, and you think of his sunflowers. And with Kalo, you just, you know, people don't recognize her for her work. They recognize her for her image. I'm here to present the People's Choice Award. Uh, after extensive voting online on Facebook as well as here in our gallery, uh, a clear winner emerged and it is Linda Manneke. Uh, Hi, I'm Linda Manneke and I'm very proud to be part of this tribute to willful women. I chose um, Georgia O'Keeffe. Um, she's most well known for her large flowers, but I loved her paintings of the West. Um, in her later years, she went to New Mexico, and I'm very familiar with New Mexico, so that's why I chose her work based on two of her paintings, and then I added a few of my own touches to it. Welcome to our Downstairs Gallery show, which is Views and Perspectives and sponsored by Lake Osceola State Bank. And we are really happy to be able to have two of our favorite artists together in a show, um, Margot Berkey and Marlies Manning. And I'm just going to turn it over to them so they can tell you about their collaboration. Hi there, I'm Marlies Manning. I'm Marco Berkey. And this is actually our third collaboration between Margo and I, our third exhibit. We're so excited to be able to do this here at Artworks. So how did we get started? Well, oh, was it two years ago we had an exhibit upstairs together? Mm -hmm. yep. And it was an interesting challenge for both of us because I had never had that much work accumulated to uh, warrant a show mm -hmm. and so I felt a lot of motivation and it was great to have your support and uh, help getting ideas and mm -hmm. so I, I feel the same way it was um, wonderful having somebody to lean on a little bit and bounce ideas off mm -hmm. of and, and share the excitement and definitely the moral support because it was a scary thing to put ourselves out there and you know show all of our work it's kind of a very revealing personal yes very personal yeah. yes yes well I appreciate that our work seems very compatible yes. it's not our, our work isn't in competition with each other, we're not doing the same thing, but everything sort of flows together. We have right. some similar themes, mm -hmm. and even though you're working in watercolor and I'm working in pastels, mm -hmm. I feel like the work complements each other and mm -hmm. sort of weaves together nicely. I agree. And I think we both really appreciate the rural character of the area mm -hmm. we live in. Mm -hmm. And so you'll 
you know, your work with the grain elevators, and of course I love grain elevators too, you've depicted so many grain elevators in such a beautiful way. Well, thank you. And I feel that way about your water pieces. I love the shorelines, mm -hmm. and that fish town is, well, that's my favorite. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> so anyway, we just are actually doing our third show here together, and we um, started a, an exhibit at the 515 Gallery in Clare, and unfortunately, COVID shut that down about yes. a week after it started, yeah. and so it's, it's wonderful to be able to, you know, pick up where we left off, so mm -hmm. to speak, here. Move works. it over here with a lot of new work. Yes, because we were busy during the shutdown. Yes, yes. <laughs> we did a lot of painting and drawing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. so that's how we got started. Hi, I'm Marlies Manning. I'm a watercolor artist here at Artworks, and I'd just like to talk a little bit about one of my favorite pieces that is in our uh, Views and Perspectives show in the lower gallery at Artworks, and it's called Did He Know It Was the Last Time? This, I, I painted this actually from a photograph that the photographer gave me permission to use, and it was just such an arresting photograph to me because it just had so much of a story to tell. Like, there's so much emotion in it when I look at it. To me, it depicts kind of the end of an era. It looks to me like the farmer hung up his coat, he has a couple of cast off shoes at the bottom, and he walked away, and that was the end of his farming career. And since then, boards have fallen down out of the top of the barn, and nothing has changed since he walked out of the barn. So I think it's sort of a poignant story, and the colors and the, uh, the muted colors kind of give that emotion of um, history. And of course, I have a little bit of red. We talked about red in a few other videos, and that just kind of gives it a little bit more interest, a little bit more pop in terms of um, you know, artistic qualities of the actual painting. Thank you. Hello, I'm Margot Berkey, and I'm pleased to share my pastel landscapes with you. I was listening to Marlise, and one of her remarks was about focusing on a theme. Uh, and you can see this wall here is a, the theme of grain elevators. And you may ask what drew me to the grain elevators. And primarily for me, it is lines, angles, and shapes. So most of these illustrations, if you want to call them that, are primarily focusing on the shapes and the angles of the buildings and the machinery. I also am fascinated with the interaction of the natural world with man-made. So you will see most of these have a landscape aspect. So there's generally uh, clouds and sky and greenery, with the exception of there's a winter one here. But I like to have a focus of the man-made and how it fits into a landscape. Now this one here, the landscape is taking over the bean, uh, central bean and grain elevator. And this is in Vickeryville, Michigan. I would have to say that doesn't even look like that anymore. It could be all gone. So most of these are in Michigan in uh, just a day's drive from here, with the exception of this one, which is a cotton gin in Texas. But I loved the, the shapes and textures of those buildings. So thank you. Thank you so much for joining us for our presentation of Willful Women, a tribute to the artist, as well as for views and perspectives. Uh, we just want to encourage you guys to come in uh, and check out uh, each of these pieces. Uh, that's really the best way 
uh, to view them is in person. Um, come on in and join us. Uh, we'd love to have you uh, here at Artworks uh, where we're bringing art to life. What else?